<laughs> yes, that wasn't out. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Advent Lutheran Church on this beautiful Pentecost Sunday. Uh, not only is it a Pentecost, it's Pentecost Sunday, uh, but we have a baptism this morning of Nicholas Buttle. Yeah, yeah, so it's good to see the family here uh, and all of you, and it's really sweet to be back after being away for two weeks. Um, uh, again, my name's Pastor Matt. Um, yeah, the past two weeks, I've been laying on a couch with my leg up in the air, taking ibuprofen every four hours or so, icing my knee after having knee surgery. So um, I'm, it's, it's still a bit swollen and tender and a bit stiff, but I am walking and I am driving. And uh, it, it will take a while to recover. Uh, I just want to give um, my thanks to this congregation. Uh, just uh, you know, thank you for your prayers. Uh, thank you for your concern. Thank you for the cards that I've received, um, the gifts that folks, the thoughtful gifts folks have given. Um, it, it has been just, just absolutely heartwarming and touching. And, you know, I have felt so loved uh, over the past two weeks. Uh, and, and the greeting of so many folks this morning. Um, yeah, and, and this morning driving in with such you know, beautiful sunshine, uh, coming back to, to Advent after being away for two weeks, um, it, it, was, I, it was just a joy. Joy just coming here and being here. It's good to be back. So thank you very much. Um, uh, we are having communion this morning. Uh, we've got the self-serve communion kits. Uh, if you believe in the real presence of Jesus Christ in the elements, you are welcome to take communion this morning. Uh, the self-serve communion kits you take in your pew. Uh, there's a wafer on the top. You peel off the top level, and there's a wafer, and then underneath that is a cup of, of grape juice for taking communion. Um, if you did not grab a communion kit on your way in, our illustrious council president, uh, George Henry, uh, we'll happily come around and give you a, a communion kit. So if you raise your hand, he'll, he'll come around. Anybody need a communion kit? And I did grab one for myself this morning, so, which I sometimes forget to do in mid-service. I'm like, oh, by the way, uh, <laughs> um, are there any announcements that need to be made? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So. All right, then. Well, then, without further ado, let us begin our worship service with the uh, confession on the second page of our bulletin. Please rise as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way instead of putting others before ourselves. We long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of Christ, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Creator, the resurrection of your Son offers life to all the peoples of earth. By your Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love, empowering our lives for service and our tongues for praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from Acts, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all the, these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language we hear them speaking about God's deeds and of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We'll read responsively from Psalm 104. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. You give it to them, they gather it. 
You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. You look at the mount at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord O my soul. Hallelujah. The second reading is from Romans chapter eight. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip? And you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. In fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be with you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the advocate the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send, to my, send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. may be seated. Aw. It's all right, Nicholas. It'll be all right. (laughs) Let us continue with prayer. Gracious God, Lord, we gather here in your name to worship you, to be in your presence, to encounter your love. Gracious God, send your Holy Spirit 
open our hearts to your love through your word. May the thoughts and meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable to you. Amen. So I look at the scripture lessons this morning as I've been looking at them over the past week. Uh, I mean, it's Pentecost Sunday. They're all great lessons, of course. Uh, but this, this week, that psalm speaks to me. Uh, especially the words... You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Alleluia. Now, as I drove in this morning, my heart was singing those words. My heart was singing those words uh, <laughs> when I came back from surgery. <laughs> My heart was singing those words um, and, and the care and love coming to me uh, through all the people in my life who love me from this congregation. Um, these are words of such great joy uh, that, that, that my heart has sung on so many occasions. Uh, words of joy that, that uh, and there's other great passages of joy in scripture uh, that, that, you know, I, I go back to again and again uh, in various moments in my life. Uh, I try to go back to, 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 to touch that joy, encounter that joy on a daily basis. As I sit to pray, as I engage the world around me, uh, the people in this world around me, And then, and then there's the words at the end of our gospel lesson. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. We hear an echo of that in our second reading as well from Romans. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is the very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Having such great joy, singing Alleluia, having a sense of peace in one's heart in our faith is not about being separated from the world around us. It isn't a, a, a thing that comes upon us when everything in life happens to be working out, when there's no problems or struggles going on. Oh, I can now... You know, breathe a sigh of relief. Hallelujah. Everything in life is wonderful and great and peachy king and everything's going my way. That's not what this kind of peace is. That's often the type of peace, that's often the type of hallelujah or joy that folks seek in our society, in our culture. Which is difficult or impossible to attain. And quite frankly, works to the benefit of those who tell us that message. Hey, you can rejoice when, you can have peace when everything is great and wonderful. Oh, by the way, if you want everything to be great and wonderful in your life, follow this diet. If you want everything in your life to be great and wonderful, well, you know what? Our views on the world are right, and all the other views on the world are wrong. If you believe as we do believe, well, you'll get to this place. Here's the carrot. Oh, you can't get it. Oh, well, try a little harder. Oh, sorry. No, 
no, no, over here. Here's the carrot. That's not what kind of peace and joy that this is. Paul's words to the Romans are to a group of people of faith who are having difficulties in the church in Rome. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. The people in Rome have things they fear. Jesus speaking to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Woohoo, here's the carrot. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. Yeah, I was filled with joy driving to church this morning, missing you all, missing this place after two weeks. But that was after I'd woken up this morning, prepared my cup of coffee and turned on the news just to see what was going on in the world and saw that there had been a mass shooting down in South Street this late last night. That 14 people had been shot and that three had been killed. And that after the shooting in Texas at that school and the shooting in New York at that supermarket and that shooting in Oklahoma at that hospital all in the past month, the past couple weeks. Not to mention the horrific pictures coming out of Ukraine. How our politicians argue with each other. How there are so many things in this world to stoke our fears. How there are so many words in this world aimed at us to stoke our fears. Oh, but wait, Pastor. Is this not Pentecost Sunday? Oh, but wait, Pastor. Do we not have a baptism this morning? Why do we have to get into all this stuff? Let's go back to the Alleluia's. In baptism, we are made children of God. Now, God loves us the moment we are created. The hairs on our head are numbered. God knows the the number of hairs on our head before we're even born. But in baptism, that claim, that love of God is formalized, that we are claimed children of God forever. That in baptism, we are marked with the cross of Christ forever. That we are washed of our sins. We're washed of the sins of this world that in the eyes of God, we are gods and nothing, nothing in all of creation, not the shootings, not the turmoil, not the wars, not the pandemic, none of these things can separate us from the love of God.
so that we do not have to fear. We, we might have our fears. We might be like Philip and want that extra reassurance on occasions. Please show us the Father. Yes, we're human. But in our faith, we do not have to be afraid. We don't have to act out of fear. We don't have to have our fears played upon. Faith cast aside fear. And casting aside fear in this world is so important. Because where there is fear, often hatred is just one step away. That it is out of fear that people do the inhuman things to each other, often. It is in fear of security that people become greedy for power, for influence, to try to conquer one another, to preemptively strike the other before they strike us, perpetuating further the fears and hatreds of this world. We do not have to be part of that cycle as Christians as people of faith because we are children of God claimed by God that we can respond and act out of love and not fear that whatever we face in our lives whatever illness whatever challenge whatever circumstance even death itself we can know the comfort and peace that comes through God's love. This is what we are called on this day at Pentecost to bring into the world around us. This promise of God's love given to us, we are called to bring into the world to give to others. A promise given to us in baptism. A promise given to Nicholas this morning. That no matter what he faces, he will be marked with the cross of Christ. That he does not need to fear. That he can know comfort. That he can know peace. That he is beloved forever. That we, at our baptism, that we are beloved forever. So as we celebrate his baptism and this promise made upon him this morning, this gift, this lifelong, this eternal gift given to him this morning, let us be renewed in our gifts of baptism as well. God's claiming us as God's children as well. That as Nicholas embarks upon a life where he need not fear, we not need fear either. And that in the love of God, we can cast out the fear and even the hatreds of the world. Amen.
this time, I'll ask that you all be seated and the baptismal party come forward. Hey. Here comes our council president. <laughs> All right. We continue the service with the baptismal liturgy found on page four of our bulletin. In a holy baptism, our gracious Father liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. In the waters of baptism, we are reborn children of God and inheritors of eternal life. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, which is the body of Christ. As we live with him and with his people, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. In Christian love, you have presented this child for holy baptism. You should therefore faithfully bring him to the, to the services of God's house, teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. As he grows in years, you should place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, provide for his instruction in the Christian faith, that living in the covenant of his baptism and in communion with the church, he may lead a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ. Do you promise to fulfill these obligations? If so, respond with the words, I do. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Holy God. Oh, this is the part one. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we give you thanks, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and you created heaven and earth. By the gifts of water, you nourished and sustained us and all living things. By the waters of the flood, you condemned the wicked and saved those whom you have chosen, Noah and his family. You led Israel by the pillar of cloud and fire through the sea out of slavery into the freedom of the promised land. And the waters of the Jordan, your son, was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, your beloved son has set us free from the bondage to sin and death and has opened the way to the joy and freedom of everlasting life. He made water a sign of the kingdom and of cleansing and rebirth. In obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit so that those who are here baptized may be given new life. Wash away the sin of all those who are cleansed by this water and bring them forth as inheritors of your glorious kingdom. To you be given praise and honor and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I ask the congregation to please rise. I ask you to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church 
the faith in which we baptize? Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil and all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. George, come hold this. Okay, Nicklaus, this is the moment. Come here, little guy. Hey, how are you? Hey. All right, we're going to baptize you, which means I'm going to hold you like this. All right, are you good? Are you good? All right, you look like you're good. Okay. Nicklaus Charles. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. There you go. See, that's what you were waiting for the entire time, I know. Yeah. Okay. The Lord be with you. All right. You want to go back to somebody more familiar? How about we go over here? God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for freeing your sons and daughters from the power of sin and for raising them up to new life through this holy sacrament. Oh, we're supposed to have our hands on top of your head. All right, so if you could come right here. Oh. Pour your Holy Spirit upon Nicholas Charles the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Amen. All right. Nicholas Charles, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. It's your turn. The candle. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. This goes to you. You put that back on the altar. Thank you. O oh God, the giver of all life, look with kindness upon this father and mother of this child. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness for their child. Strengthen them in their own baptism so that they may share eternally with their child the salvation you have given them through Jesus Christ our Lord. All right. All right, Nicholas. Let me introduce you to some people around here. So we're going to take... You know these folks, these are your mom and dad, mommy and daddy. And you know them, these are 
love, people who love you dearly, your sponsors. And you know these people too, they're your family, but these people here, these people here are all your family too. That you have been baptized into God's family. An adopted child of God. We are all children of God here. Every one of us. There you go. Yep. In this place, you were loved. Through baptism, God has made this a new brother made this new brother a member of the priesthood we all share in Christ Jesus, that we may proclaim the praise of God and bear his creative and redeeming word to all the world. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, children of the same Heavenly Father, and worker with us in the kingdom of God. There we go. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share the peace with one another. Peace will be with you. No, no, it can go in the camp. It can be blown out. Yep. Then it can go to the family. Oh, okay. All right. We're just going to, and this is a gift from the church. All right. Uh, we can go back to our seats, and we, can, we continue with the prayers of intercession. Thank you, George. Thank you. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy living one, holy moving one, burst open our locked doors and by your spirit drive us out into the world proclaiming your mighty deeds. Direct our words and actions, trusting the advocate abiding in and among us. God, in your mercy, Feed and care for your creatures that remain hidden to us, yet contribute to the vibrancy of your creation. Train us to interact with creation from a place of wonder, awe, and reverence. God, in your mercy, send your spirit to places where language is a barrier to justice and mercy for those who seek it. Bless the work of translators, interpreters, and teachers. Promote understanding for the sake of those longing for true freedom and peace. God, in your mercy, comfort all who live in constant fear and any who are suffering. We pray especially for the people of Ukraine, those affected by the pandemic, and especially those in, that have been assaulted mercilessly in Texas. We also name those out loud or in our hearts at this time. Remind them that your spirit has made them your children, that they are never far from your glory. God, in your mercy, guide all bishops, pastors, missionaries, and other ministers of the gospel. Foster our relationships with partner synods and local ministry partners, that our visions and actions are spirit-led, God, in your mercy, gather your people across nations and lands. Root our common life in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ, and by your spirit, bind us together with all the saints who have gone before us. God, in your mercy, in your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
Today the offering is being collected uh, in the offering plate towards the entrance of the sanctuary. If you had not left an offering at the beginning of the worship service, you may do so afterwards. Um, let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. And great love you sent us, Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering who preached good news to the poor and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us now pray as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen the body of christ given for you The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know the life in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine down upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Holy Spirit, come with your fire, Holy Spirit, come with your fire, Holy Spirit, come with your fire, Holy Spirit, come with your fire. Oh, 
Love your neighbor. Thanks be to God.